Hello Equestrians and welcome back to my channel. I do apologise that it has been a while since you've seen me. Things have been a bit topsy-turvy in my life recently. If you're new here you might not know that I have a nine month old daughter called Hazel and Hazel has not been wanting to sleep. <laughs> so for a while I've been editing sort of in the evenings so she would have gone to bed at 9pm and then I would have had you know a few hours every evening to edit. Unfortunately, <laughs> she does not want to sleep at the moment. She'll go to sleep at nine, wake up at half ten, and then doesn't want to go back to sleep until the early hours. So that's why there hasn't been a new video for a while. I've just really struggled to uh, have time to even sit and film or sit and edit. So yeah, it's been hard work, <laughs> but I'm here now. And um, the last time you saw me, I was having my first lesson in a long time. And I believe I told you guys that I was off to my first show in a long while as well. So this is the show vlog, if you couldn't tell from the title already. And annoyingly, I decided that I was going to do a run up to a show prep video. Does that make any sense? So like kind of from maybe a week before a show, what kind of goes on behind the scenes to get peps ready. I decided I was going to film that after a lot of events had happened. So I do apologize that there isn't a lot of video to back up what I'm saying, but I hope that won't matter anyway. I hope you'll enjoy seeing the process of getting peps ready for a show and everything that goes on beforehand, including some lesson footage that you won't have seen. So yeah, uh, lots to cover in this video. It may be a lengthy one, but stick to it because I think it'll be a good one and I'm sure you guys will really enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So one of the first things that I do um, a week before a show is clip peps and normally I clip her myself but this time round because I'm not so confident with doing her face I actually had someone come out and do it for me who has done pepper before she is amazing if you're based local to me in Essex clippity clop clipping services <laughs> is a bit of a mouthful to say um, she does come out and do clipping services and she is really really lovely really kind and patient with horses who are maybe a little bit unsure of it so yes i highly recommend her if you wanted someone professionally to come out and clip your horse for you so yeah normally i would do it myself but i wanted a really good finish so i had laura come out and do it for me again as always an amazing job peps look super afterwards and if you've watched some of my kind of clipping vlogs in the past you'll know that i always hot cloth so i'd give peps a good hot cloth after clipping her and this just gets rid of any dirt and grease and grime that's been stuck under the coat that you've, you'll struggle to get to with just your usual grooming brushes. And it uh, just rejuvenates the skin, gives it that nice glow. I use a tail thinning rake to thin the tail. You shouldn't clip the tail. I actually used to do this in the start when I was kind of new to showing, um, just because I'd seen, you know, the tails looking so like trim and everything. Um, but no, you should pull the tail rather than clip it. You can clip either side to neaten it up, which is what I did. So I thinned her tail at the top and just took a few inches off the bottom as well. If you're showing cobs, it should sit just under the hock. So yeah, the tails are trimmed quite short. But yes, that was all done a week before. Another thing that I kind of do is like, I'll go to the tack shop if there's anything that I am missing. Georgina, my instructor, who you would have seen in the last video, she recommended to me to get a longer show cane because uh, the one I had was really short. And uh, she said it would just help me in the ring because it's a little bit more like a schooling whip, but it's still allowed. Um, so yeah, I went out and I got one of those. And what else did I buy? I got some chalk, which I will tell you why I got chalk a little bit later on. I also picked up some longer spurs, which Georgina also recommended to me. Yeah, just a few little bits like that that I maybe don't have but I will need for the show and in this particular week I also had two lessons so I'll talk you through the lessons a little bit in the first lesson of the week which was on the Tuesday we were working on circles so in the first lesson that I had with her you will have seen that we were mostly working just around the school just generally trying to get peps going more forward but in this lesson we kind of threw a spanner in the works and did a lot of circle work this was really really hard for both of us it really starts to like show your um, wobbly bits when you take a horse off and away from the fence 
and onto a circle because then they have to rely on their own balance a lot more and if you're not entirely balanced then you're throwing them out of balance and yeah but it was a really productive lesson she felt amazing towards the end of it and I feel like I really accomplished a lot in that lesson and uh, the circles got better and better throughout which is obviously what you hope for on Thursday's lesson it was about practicing our individual show and we actually came into the school and it was quite busy. There was quite a lot of people in there. I said to Georgina, it's good practice for me because it's good practice for in the warm up because there'll obviously be lots of horses in the warm up and I'll have to duck and dive and it's going to be a bit stressful. So that was good practice for me just doing that. Um, but we worked around everyone and again, working on like circles, general forward goingness. <laughs> And once the school had cleared out a little bit, we started working on some figure of eight. So we tried a big figure of eight, come across the school, and as we're changing the diagonal, pick up canter, canter round the school, trot across the middle, and then pick up canter on the other side. Overall, I think we did okay. Um, I knew like, as soon as we'd go into an individual show that we would kind of fall apart a little bit. We always have. Um, I think it's a little bit of like the pressure of it. It's also the fact that you're not just going round and round in a circle and you've got loads of time to kind of correct them and, and work on yourselves. But I was really pleased with the lesson. It gave me a lot of confidence and I'm so glad that I had two lessons in the run up to the show because it really did boost my confidence big time. I mean, I went from not having any lessons in so long to having a lesson feeling like really good and really excited about it to suddenly booking a show and being like right I need to pack in as many lessons as I could so I did have a couple of lessons uh, in the run-up to it which was really good and I highly recommend that if you do have a show coming up do try and squeeze a lesson in um, it just kind of helps you refine things a little bit give you a little bit of confidence in areas that you maybe aren't so confident in yeah really highly recommend that you do that then we come to Saturday which is the day before the show so I don't have my own horse box I don't have my own trailer or any transport or anything so whenever I go to a show I have to hire um, this is a bit of a pain because it's expensive and unfortunately it does mean that I don't get to go out as much as I would like to but it is one of those things we can't all afford a horse box I would love to one day and hopefully get out a little bit more but in the meantime, while I am hiring, one of my go-tos is Harry Garrett's horse box hire. He's always been so reliable. His boxes are lovely to drive. They're always well looked after. They're always well presented. He takes great care and pride in his business, which is so lovely. So if you're local to me, again, <laughs> This is another service that could work out for you. He is often fully booked, so I was quite surprised that I actually got a box, but that just shows you how good the service is and how reliable he is. Normally, it would be me driving, um, but I wasn't actually meant to go in my friend's box, and it ended up going in for some repairs, which meant we couldn't go in her box. So we ended up hiring Harry's box together. Her classes were all in the morning and I just had the one in the afternoon. So she went and collected the box on the Saturday evening and she said she wouldn't mind driving me to um, my uh, class in the afternoon, which is really kind of her. So she went and picked the box up, which was nice for me because normally it's a, a stress, another load of stress on top of everything else that you've got to get ready to go and collect the box when it's it's about a 20 to 30 minute drive away from me to pick the box up so you know it just adds a little bit more time when you've still got tack to clean and blah 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 <laughs> lots going on with me having my class in the afternoon it was actually pretty chilled out this time around but I'll talk you through what I would normally do on the day before a show so normally I would bath peps um, but it was quite miserable and I didn't really see the point in doing it when she was recently clipped. She's rugged most of the time, she's pretty clean anyway, and she was hot clothed. So she didn't really need a bath, if I'm honest, and I try not to bath too often anyway, because it does wash out the natural oils. I have done a video about this before. If you are interested, I'll try and leave a link up here. So yeah, normally I would bath the day before, do all my tack cleaning, and then go and collect the box. But thankfully, I didn't have to do that part. So we're all caught up. This is the part where I decided to start filming everything. So I'm gonna talk you through my tack cleaning. And I actually brought my exclusive Haas brushes home as well because they were filthy. So they really did need a clean. So here I'm actually using exclusive ProSense. Um, it's actually a horse shampoo for sort of sensitive horses and stuff, but it does say on the back that you can use it 
to uh, wash your brushes as well because these exclusive brushes are actually made with horse hair so it is very delicate you know and it's good to take care of them so uh, just giving them a good scrub I use my uh, curry comb uh, to scrub these brushes the diva I don't use anything but my hand and they're just getting my hands really in there get get right in the bristles and get all the the dust and grime out of them <laughs> literally like a different brush like a brand new brush again he's a dirty one compared to a clean one they really did need a wash so here's the diva it's a lovely soft lamb's wool uh, brush and like I say just using my hands for this one um, normally you do really need to give this brush a few days to dry but I uh, was doing it the day before so I just here I'm squeezing out as much water as I possibly can giving it a good shake in the hopes that it dries in time Moving on to my bridle, um, just using fairy liquid for this and water. Um, just giving the bridle a good clean, really getting all the grime off of it. Getting right into the bits because I like my bit to sparkle. Getting in all the nooks and crannies. Now moving on to my lovely wide boot company, Atiyah boots. Uh, one of the most common questions I get actually is where I get my riding boots from, so now you know. And I did actually do a full review on these over on uh, Digital Horses YouTube channel, if you want to go and check that out. I pre-wash like all my leather and dry it, and then I will go on to um, conditioning them afterwards. Today is show day! I'm really excited and mostly nervous. Um, Peps has just been fast asleep, so she's reserving her energy for her show. I've just been and done her hay net for the box, and uh, yeah, got plenty to do. Okay, so I have quickly mucked out, just left my bed up. I'm actually quite lucky because um, my class is the last class of the day, so I have the morning to get ready. Um, but we still want to get there fairly early, so we've got plenty of time to kind of get our act together. As you saw, I cleaned most of my tack last night, but I still need to clean my saddle. I need to trim up peps, just like clean her up with the clippers a little bit, hot cloth her because it's, I think it's too cold to bath, but I will wash her legs and her white sock. So yeah, plenty to do, <laughs> but I'm gonna crack on with her saddle first and then go from there. So let's get going. hope it dries in time or else I'm going slippy slidies today. Unfortunately the uh, spray has snapped and broken so I'm gonna have to take the spray part off. I can borrow the one from this bowl. Handy. I know people who literally use like toothbrushes and stuff to get in all the nooks and crannies of their pack. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we were going to do that. 
if, yeah. Yes, if we were off to Windsor, I wouldn't be half assing it. Let's put it that way. But honestly, the, this tack cleaner is like a lifesaver for the last minute. <laughs> it's like, well, it's basically skin, isn't it? You know? It's animal hide, so if you imagine your skin's really dry, yeah. you moisturise, it's the same with the tack really. Stressing, but you know when you think I need to track on really. Rehogged. She didn't have much hair growth there, but. Just want her to look nice and neat and tidy. Look how shiny she is, and I haven't even touched her yet. You see the dapples as well. So excited to get her out. And then I've just uh, cut the tail. It should be just below the hock for a shell cob. And I've neatened up the sides of her tail. Last week I pulled it. Um, I can't find the tail puller, but I'm gonna keep looking because I just want to neaten it up a little bit. And I also want to try and find my smart grooming beard trimming tool because there's just a few little hairs that I wouldn't mind getting rid of but now I am going to grab my freshly cleaned brushes which are all in here looking stunning I'm going to be using quite a few exclusive products today guys and talk you through some of the things that I use Told you what to chase, told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave, had to find a way to change, had to leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream, I be in my mind up there almost daily. It's how I pass time, no opinions safely. It's how I understand what I want in this place. See, cause everybody wanna tell you bad things. What could go wrong? What fame brings, but success is a finicky thing. And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be. I don't wanna let myself down myself. Then you get to the shell and just brush it out <laughs> and then wear it <laughs> wear it yeah put ch white chalk all over my dark horse <laughs> and then
and then yeah, when this dries, it just brush out all the excess. The thing is, we'll get there and she will have pooed on the box anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> I just know it. A little tiny bit. <laughs> I just dropped most of the chalk on the floor, to be honest. Someone in the comments, tell us what that's called, because someone will know. <laughs> nope. I'm just going to do a hot cloth now. Got my hot water in there. I'm not going to hold off with the oil. She's going to sparkle today a little bit more for good luck. <laughs> I always do that, like with everything. Like if I'm cooking pasta or whatever, I'm like, <laughs> just a few more strands, you know. A bit of a cheat if you don't feel like backing your horse. <laughs> hop, 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 hop. <laughs> and you can see the difference apart from the dusty. Oh, yeah. I literally feel like an oil slick now. <laughs> Could grab hold of the reins and be like, whoa. <laughs> Might chuck her shelf weight straight on after this. And then at least we know she's already. Yeah. Just give her a good green when we get there. Happy so already. <laughs> Baby already. They look gorgeous. Okay, so we've just been packing the box. As you can see, we have got the awesome Harry Garrett's horse box hire, whom I have used many times before, and he is my go-to for horse box hire. And everything is all packed now. Thanks very much to my organized equestrian notes. I know that I've got everything that I need. This is the organized equestrian day planner so this has kindly been gifted to me to review for you guys please do go and check them out they have some amazing uh, products to keep you organized and ready and raring to go whenever you're out at a show or if you've got lessons or any outings that you've got going their products will be really handy for you anyone who knows me knows that i am not an organized person in fact i may as well be called the unorganized equestrian <laughs> this will be very very handy for me and i do in fact have an outing on the 18th of october so i will be writing down all of the things that i need this is just really handy to have like i normally just kind of write everything down in my phone that i need to take with me in a notepad and then i just hope that I grab everything and I do go through the list but I think it's so much easier to write it like this nine times out of ten if it's something for you it's going to be at home and if it's something for the horse it's likely to be at the yard so that's also a kind of quick way to go through it and think right that'll be at the yard this will be at home grab this that and the other and you can kind of organize your day a little bit better say for the rider if you know like pick up I don't know things like water and um, the camera, of course, as a vlogger, I'm gonna need my camera, uh, things like that, and I know all of those will be at home. Very, very handy little thing to have. It also came with these freaking adorable stickers. I have already used one of them. How cute are they? So I already have one sheet written out for my show on the 18th. There you can see my little, the little sticker that I use saying it's a competition, so I know that it is an important bit of paper that I really shouldn't lose. <laughs> Highly recommend you head on over to The Organised Equestrian and purchase some lovely products to help you get organised. So we've got my double bridles packed in there, my show jacket, my... What's that called? <laughs> my saddle. Uh, the show numbers in there, my exclusive brushes in there, camera, we can't forget that. And I did add a few last minute things. I just thought I best take an exercise sheet and a outdoor rug just in case, because this is England and let's face it, it is likely to rain. But yes, we have got the red machine. This is called the beast. And uh, yeah, got the red to bring home the reds. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. It's all experience, guys, experience. <laughs> so I've got a bit of time and I'm currently trying to thread a needle so that I can fix this 
it's so loose but yeah threading a needle is um that's not fun is it if this doesn't work i'm literally going to put a paper clip or paper clip a clip at the back of the button to keep it in place until i can spend five hours trying to thread a needle at home <coughs> so close why do they make the needle hole so small i, I couldn't do it <laughs> My advice is like it's always good to take some needle and thread with you to a show just for these occasions but perhaps thread the needle when you've got like 10 hours to spare to do it. But I'm going to try and use a safety pin just around the back just to hold it in place. Oh, I don't want my boobies to pop out. <laughs> 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 no. Bet you didn't expect to see this in the vlog. Pure quality content and get right, get in. Lord, send me help. Good girl. She's like, oh, there's food here. <laughs> I'm fine. Good girl. First time loading in a long time and she's up. First train on the plane, we were flying to the mountain, all across the ocean, and there we go again. Walking in the streets, lost in new places, meeting new faces, diving deeper in the world. through the camera. It smells amazing, doesn't mm. it? And it's handy pocket size. Ta-da! Ta -da. <laughs> okay guys, so we're just here to warm up. And um, yeah, it was quite quiet when I went in, which was nice. Peps felt pretty relaxed, just walking around, having a little stretch. And here, <laughs> uh, my friend was just kind of giving me some words of encouragement and I was like, there's no like barriers keeping you in the ring so they just set out like cones to tell you where to go um so that kind of scared me a little bit i uh, wasn't sure if peps would stay within the arena um but here we're just having a little warm-up she actually felt quite fresh and forward for a change which was quite nice um as you might know from watching the last video that i did where i had my first lesson in a while getting her forward is normally the problem um here I was just like telling her, no, I'm not asking you to canter, I'm asking you to trot, which is another one of the things that we're working on, because she would rather canter than trot, she just finds it easier, and yeah, she's very lucky, <laughs> very spooky, um, but you know, nice and active, and and yeah, there again, trying to canter instead of trot, um, but there the trot looks really nice, 
just having a little a little trot around letting her have a good look at everything um I was focusing more on just getting her going forward and keeping her keeping her going rather than worrying about sort of outline or anything like that because at this point in time it was a real struggle to get her in an outline um we are improving with that with you know more recent lessons which is really exciting um this it has actually been like six weeks into the show now um here we're having a bit of a canter and as you can see she's kind of <laughs> rearing around the uh, arena there uh there's norman lovely norman there having a lovely trot around the outside and yeah a bit messy in the transition there as you can see the arenas the uh, warm-up starting to fill up there she did drop into a little bit of an outline she's thinking about it starting to relax a little bit which is nice swing in nicely and now we've been called in so it was quite a big arena really which was a little bit daunting for me because I am not at the peak of my fitness as you can tell um, and I was just worried about keeping us both going uh, with the ride round um, but here they just start off by watching you walk around and you just want to get the best walk out of your horse as you can so you know a nice active walk you want them to be looking like they they've got a purpose which at this point perhaps doesn't really does she I think she was so you know she had such a buzz about her in the warm-up and I actually took her into the ring first and I think I should have let someone else go in first um, just so she's kind of following because then she sort of warms up a little bit more there she had a spook at something I'm not quite sure what that was about yeah I mean she's I didn't want to go in there with too high hopes you know like I say it, it, it is the first show I've been to in a long long time and she was very lucky um, and spooky which is to be expected because she hasn't seen anything but our yard for such a long time but yeah she's kind of like thinking about relaxing there which is nice the walk looks pretty nice but you can see she needs to just track up a little bit better but that's lovely there good girl shame that it's on the other side where the judge isn't looking this is one thing with showing is the judge will normally stand looking at one part of the arena so you want to try and get the best out of your horse when you come across the judge so here she's asked us all to trot round and this is the bit where you should be showing off the best trot and peps does a little hop and a skip and a jump because she thinks she'd rather canter look at the dapples though <laughs> she looks really pretty um so yeah unfortunately not the best trot going past the judge but i was just so pleased that we actually kept up the pace that was the main thing for me i was so scared that we wouldn't be fit enough to even do this but yeah she's just having a good look you can see her one ear back at me listening to me bless her heart that was my instructor that just went past the camera as well so yeah that was um pretty nerve-wracking competing against my instructor um yeah just having a having a trot round this is pretty much what showing is <laughs> Just walking, trotting and cantering around in circles. I think here she's... You can see how the horse in front has a lovely balanced trot and Peps is not. She's, you know, kind of a bit flat and rushing. So here I just did a circle, not the prettiest circle in the world, but it was just to give myself a bit of room between me and the horse in front so that I wasn't up their bum. <laughs> um yeah and here she picked up a nice canter transition honestly the the transitions i thought was really nice like i know she's not in an outline it doesn't look the prettiest but i really wasn't asking her to be in an outline she's quite hard to ride into an outline and it's something that you know i'm getting into now a bit more um but here i was literally just <laughs> focusing on keeping her going forward again doing a little circle here Ooh, very wobbly circle but there you go a circle nonetheless maybe a bit more of an oval <laughs> but look at her she's well up for it bless her and there's my instructor so she's trotting across the uh 
trying to cross the middle there so now we're changing the rain I trotted a little bit soon there but here you should do another nice kind of trot in front of the judge which <laughs> we didn't really get but yeah again picks up canter lovely here no problems you know no questions asked she's like you want me to canter I canter that's fine I can't do it in an outline though just poodling round <clears throat> and yeah by the, this point I was just absolutely amazed that we were still going round bless her heart such a good girl and now um, we're being told by the uh, steward up here that down the next long side in front of the judge to extend now we're not good at that <laughs> I'll just put it that way um, but I just tried my best and you know tried to get a bit more out of her here tried to send her forward a little tiny bit of a change of pace but not what the judge is looking for you know they want a proper gallop really coming into the individual show and me and my instructor had planned an individual show but the judge kind of put a bit of a spanner in the works because she wanted us to do a show that she'd kind of had in her head um, which I didn't really account for and she wanted us to walk away from her and trot back and I was sat in the warm-up thinking right how can I do that like how can I work my show into what she's asking and I just could not like for the life of me figure out what I was doing <laughs> um, so this show I'm gonna warn you now guys in advance it is not pretty <laughs> um, and we do really fall apart in the individual show because everything's a lot tighter like when you going around the arena you have a lot more room to kind of fix your problems but here I walk away and then I do kind of a little circle to one side like a half circle picking up trot and then trot back towards the judge and here she really fights me you can see she's hopping she's like she just doesn't it's not best pleased here she goes to pick up canter and I had two choices I could either try to make a trot or I could just canter and make it look like that was kind of what I'd planned to do uh, so that's what I went with I decided to pretend that the canter was uh, what I wanted to do then trotting across the diagonal here just to show a canter on the other rein and that wasn't a bad transition I was quite happy with that and yeah the canter looks okay here I tried to send her on here but it wasn't I wouldn't say it was as good as the first one but I tried. This bit is really wobbly. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. But, you know, it can't always look good, guys, can it? Or else it would be really boring. And then I just kind of bring her to a stop. I tried to keep it short and sweet um, and do the best I could, which is what I feel like we did. Not a very square halt either. <laughs> So there you have it guys, so that was my first show in well over a year, first show since having a baby, uh, it was certainly a learning experience, uh, things did kind of go out the window a little bit, but I guess the pressure's on, you know people are watching, you are nervous to see what the judge has to say or what they think about you. It was a really good experience, it was really really nice to meet Lauren as well from at Amateur Showing over on Instagram. She actually was the person who introduced me to Georgina, who I now have lessons with. And she's just such a lovely person and has been so supportive of me and my riding. And, you know, I just wish there could be more of that in the equestrian community. I feel like there's a bit of a, like, because it's competitive, I feel like sometimes people don't want to share their secrets or, you know, give that support to amateurs or people who maybe don't know as well. So to meet someone who really is so supportive and so kind and welcoming was just really lovely um, and I really appreciate that. So thanks Lauren and great to meet the wonderful Norman as well who is flipping huge. Um, he's a proper tank of a cob, I really really like him. The other thing that I didn't mention in the beginning of the video is that actually I was competing against my instructor. So as you can imagine the pressure really was on because she was there watching and I didn't want to let her down so there was just you know there was a lot to think about but overall I am so so pleased considering it had been a while since we'd been out Peps was kind of on springs a little bit I think she was a little bit like spooky a little bit excitable um, she was really happy to be out I think she loaded like a dream 
you know, both times going there and going back. And I can't really ask much more of her. She was a, a bit lucky in the ring. Again, I can't really say anything bad about that because she hasn't been out in such a long time. But I was really pleased with us because we kept going with the ride round. I was really worried that we weren't going to be fit enough to do that. So, you know, we kept the truck going, we kept the canter going, we got the correct leads. Um, she wasn't in an outline, I get that, and that was the only criticism from the judge, really, was that she wasn't in the outline, but she was forward, she was going somewhere, you know, she was taking me. She could have been taking me a bit more, and once she starts doing that, that contact will come, and that's what me and Georgina have been working on anyway. It's a few weeks later now, we've been doing more lessons, I kind of have a lesson a week now, which is really nice, and it gives me that focus and that drive to want to do better and we have been nailing that contact it is coming and i'm starting to feel my riding change starting to feel pepper's way of going change she's really carrying me now which is so nice so despite that comment from the judge i'm not really bothered i think the rest of it went really well the other thing was just the individual show really threw me because me and my instructor had planned a show to do and when I got there, the judge wanted us to do a specific show, which involved walking away and trying back. And that wasn't something that I, I'd thought about. And I, I saw her ask the other competitors to do that. And I was sitting in the lineup thinking, uh, how do I rearrange my show for this? And I was trying to think about it and I thought I'd worked it out, but it wasn't the best individual show. But it's one of those things, you know, this is what will happen at shows and it's just all good learning, good fun. Peps looked amazing, in my opinion. I was pleased with my riding, considering how much pressure was on. And yeah, really can't fault my horse. She is amazing and just gives and gives and gives all the time. I just love her so much. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Also, don't forget to leave a comment as I do love reading your comments and finding out what you enjoyed best about the video and also what you'd like to see from me. Until the next one, guys, see you later. Bye.